Hello and welcome. My name is Ajax Post and we're here with a brand new game on the channel, Interstellar Transport Company. And uh, this may turn into a series, eh, whether it's a long or a short series, we don't know yet. We'll see how good I am, as usual, at these things. Sometimes I'm reasonably competent, other times I am horrifically rubbish. Um, but we shall find that out in due course. Uh, anyway, a little bit of background on the game before we get into it. The, um, the, this, this came out in early access uh, about August 2017, if I remember my notes correctly, uh, and then was given a full release on Steam uh, back in May, I think it was May or June of this year, 2019. Now, I remember some time ago, probably during the early access uh, phase, uh, I saw a video or two from Colonel Failure and perhaps one or two other guys um, looking at the game and it looked interesting. It looked like the sort of thing I could pick up and and really enjoy. But looking at how they played it and some of the reviews that followed on from that, the game did seem to have issues, um, particularly in terms of the UI. And to be honest, I've played about two or three hours of it now and yet the UI is a bit of an issue with it and um, there are other things other problems I have with the game uh, but we'll come to those as we go through setting up uh, in just a moment okay now full disclo full disclosure um, I came across this game uh, again just uh, this last month because of a new announcement on the Steam forums from the developers saying that later this year they're bringing out a major update to it so it's still being worked on um, it's not a game that got bad reviews and was just dropped. They've obviously taken all that feedback on board and are working to make the game even better and much more approachable. Uh, so they're addressing, they say, the UI issues that a lot of people have commented on. They're also adding in the ability to mod the game, which should be interesting, to be honest, and we may see that as we go through. It depends how far I get in the series, to be honest. Um, uh, plus a whole raft of other updates and changes and fixes and so on. Um, we're waiting further news on that uh, over the coming weeks. Now, around the same time that I saw that announcement, uh, one of the key distribution um, websites uh, had a key available from the publishers and developers of the game, uh, which... I could pick up and did pick up obviously so I have got this game for free but I'm going to try and judge it as objectively and as uh, dispassionately as I can um, and uh, not try and give you a, a false impression of it. So let's have a look at it say so I've only played it for two or three hours and there's a lot of complexity in it. On my latest Sim Airport uh, video for example um, a new subscriber. Hi, thank you very much for, for watching that video, if you're watching this one, of course. Um, and thank you for commenting. Um, wondered if uh, Sim Airport had a steep learning curve. I don't think it has a particularly steep one. I, I like games which are easy to get into and then develop the complexity and make things more challenging for you as you go through, but are easy to pick up. I mean, Civilization was the first game that did that for me. You picked it up, you set up a town and you organize things, and then you realize, uh oh, things get complicated, I have to manage a lot of stuff. But it evolved naturally. This game doesn't really do that. And unfortunately, the tutorials, which are on here, are, in a word, rubbish. They, they, re they just show you where to click to, to do certain things, and that's it. They give you no real clue as to the detailed processes of the, of the game and what you need to link together to achieve success or results in the game. Uh, now, they did attempt to fix that by producing a much larger uh, YouTube tutorial, which is this first link here, which is much more helpful. Um, so if you just want a, a basic introduction to how do the, the thing, how do the, some of the key dialogue boxes work, then this is fine, these basic tutorials here. But if you really want a better idea of how it works, uh, watch that uh, watch that full tutorial, um, and also watch a few other uh, YouTube content creators who've played the game to get an idea of how things should work. I will try and do that if I can, uh, and, and guide you through some of the key uh, features as I see them, as I set the game up, but uh, don't trust me to understand everything, because at this point, I don't. Uh, so. Having said that, uh, the game does have multiplayer. I don't do multiplayer, it's so we're not going to go down that route. Uh, we're going to do single player. Now, there's one of the great things about the game is there's vast amounts of customization. 
you can set up how many stars you want, how where you want to start um, in the universe, whether you want to start on Earth within the Sol uh, star system, or go somewhere totally uh, outside of our, our earthly experience. How many uh, stars in the universe, um, all the competitors you want, um, and all that sort of stuff. So you can set that up really quite to, to, to match your demands for a challenge. You can make it very easy, like having no AI competition. I'm not sure if that is that much easier, but <laughs> it means you're not fighting re for resources. Um, uh, and the basic complexity level uh, for you and the AI. So you're getting lots of information here, which is really nice. As you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for information. I just like seeing stuff, data, and being able to analyze quite what's happening as a result of the changes I make. Um, now, what I've done so far is use this predefined game because I can't be bothered <laughs> to set up, um, uh, but the, 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 all, all the other uh, options. And I'm just wondering actually whether I could do something. No, I'm going to, I'm going to do it this way. I'm, I'm still going to do this. So my company name, this does mean we're going to start on, on earth in the soul system, which is a bit dull and boring, but. It's as good a place, and, and the concepts apply wherever you start, to be honest, uh, as far as I can make out anyway. So what we're going to call ourselves, uh, it has to be called Ajax something. Um, Ajax, inter, can I spell interstellar? Interstellar. My typing skills, as you may be familiar with, are atrocious. And colour, what colour shall I use? Uh, green is one of my favourite colours, so yeah, let's be green. Ajax Interstellar, is that a good name? It is now. So we've got a fairly typical starting position. I think we should have three AI competitors. We're starting here in the Sol star system. Uh, it gives you lots of basic information, so it is full of data, which is great. And you've got a whole raft of overlays here, particularly to do with where you can find resources and so on. Um, I haven't found a need to get into them yet, but uh, we may or may not need to address that. The game does start in pause mode, which I love. Thank you very much for that. So you don't have to sort of load a save game and then panic to find the pause button before it gets carried away and does something you didn't expect. So it starts there and you've got pause, you've got speed controls up here. A nice uh, selection of them, question mark here. Oh, look. Oh, actually, do you know what? I haven't actually been here to these help screens. Um, but all this is, is this is quite like a, a sort of the uh, encyclopedia, the Wikipedia kind of thing um, on, uh, on on most games. Like, I'm going to draw a comparison with, with um, Civilization because that has a wonderful help system and a nice good tutorial mechanism. Uh, this seems to have quite a nice uh, set of help screens and encyclopedia, but the tutorial system, as I said, is a bit rubbish, largely because it's independent of you playing the game. I quite like a tutorial system which uh, sort of takes you into the game um, step by step as part of the actual gameplay, not as a separate set of little video click here, click that kind of things. Anyway, let's go into Sol. Uh, moving around the screen, the, mouse, the middle mouse button held down moves you around the screen. You can, I think, yeah, you can use the WASD keys. I don't do that because I can't play on the keyboard. Uh, it's, it's a skill I lack. Um, and you can use the right mouse button to change your angle, uh, move up and down and around. Uh, the left button uh, doesn't do much. Uh, or if you, you have, of course, got window edge scrolling as well. Uh, okay, so. Here we have three locations that we can send ships to and from. We've got Earth, we have got Luna, our moon, and we have Mars, uh, which is a distant planet. Um, that is important because our early ships that we have available to us um, are kind of slow, so trying to go somewhere distant might be a bit of an issue. Okay, now we have, I think, got three competitors here. So we need to make sure we get the gates we want. 
So each of these gates here will take one spaceship for one route. Um, well, actually, the routes aren't tied to gates, as far as I know. Um, but if you've got 14 routes, um, having two gates will lead to a lot of congestion in the space lanes. Um, and that will mean loss of profit, loss of uh, revenue as ships wait in the sky before they can land. Um, where's, where's, what, what, where, ooh, do I have to click? If I click that again, I'll get all this stuff here. Okay, um, so we also have, in addition to all these spaceports here where ships dock, there's a lot of um, uh, other buildings on the planet. Um, oh, there, yeah, if you click on one in that menu, these are all the green ones, these are all built. Uh, so if I click on that one there, there should be an arrow pointing to it. There it is. Um, and that's a large consumer factory. Uh, that's owned by the government. I'm not going to worry about that. I'll leave that well alone. These slots here are where you can build um, your own... Uh, if I, uh, is that me clicking the right mouse? But I'm not quite sure why I keep clicking out of that, to be honest. Oh dear, oh dear. Uh, uh, yeah, click, click. Yeah, so I can build stuff. Uh, okay, so if I click there... Ah, th yeah, this comes up and it says I can build stuff uh, in here. Uh, so that's that empty spot. Uh, I think though, if you uh, on this uh, menu here just click empty, it will pick a random. It seems to pick a random slot and build your building in there. Now, medium office is that mine? Ajax Interstellar. Yes, it is. Now, offices are important for reputation, and reputation is important because that means companies or governments are happier to give to give you contracts to ship stuff back and forth and you get better prices basically by having a better reputation from what I understand of it. Uh, we also need, we don't have one yet do we, or oh, a maintenance shed, do we have a maintenance shed? Yes we do, okay. That's important because ships that we buy will deteriorate as they age and as they travel. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is buy some gates. Now up here I've got $300,000. Is that all? It doesn't look like a lot, does it? No. Um, so I will have some gates. Now shall I just take a whole sort of section? Uh, let's take one. Let's uh, lease that gate. And as you can see there, it cost me 30 thousand seven hundred to lease it and then it will cost me a running uh, amount of uh, fifteen hundred uh, a month for leasing it uh, let's take two just to get off to a flying start now we will be sending ships to the moon to supply it so I want to make sure I've got a gate on the moon uh, let's lease that gate now, because this is a much smaller planetoid, uh, rather than a huge populace, populated planet, uh, the leasing costs are that much less. So that's only five grand and 250 a month. Will one be enough? Let's take two, uh, just in case I want two. <laughs> anyway. Right, okay, so we've got gates. We can now send ships between these two celestial bodies. But what are we going to ship? Now all this stuff over here tells you what goods are required and what goods they can supply. So I'm on the moon at the moment. So on this graph here, all those above the horizontal line are demands. All those below the horizontal line are supplies. So the moon here has these raw materials uh, plants. And they're extracting all sorts of stuff from the, well, from the surface and from underneath the surface of the planet, I suppose. Yeah, from wherever they're getting them from, I don't know. That's not quite explained how the mining operation works. So this, uh, the lunar can supply raw, rare resources, and it wants food, water, machinery, obviously to sustain life, presumably on Mars, and also equip these factories. 
and also colonists. Now, this uh, this table, this chart here, is given more information, more detail here in this uh, table of data, these numbers. So the delivery price is how much you're getting for each unit, I reckon. Yeah, the market price uh, was 126, but because I've got a reasonably good reputation, I'm getting another $20 um, for some quantity of <laughs> of delivery. Um, now the weekly change. Uh, that I think is how much is going down. Uh, is that the the quantity again? It's not. There's a lot of information sort of given to you here, but it's not always clear or obvious quite what it means or what you're supposed to do with it. Okay, now this is where things do start getting slightly confusing. The surplus or deficit here. So water is something. Uh, sorry, food. Let's take a look at food. Food is something they want. And there's a delivery price of 150 and there is a deficit here of 517 which means uh, which is a sort of rough rounding up of these two numbers you see here in the dialog box they have in storage 420 roughly and they need uh, nearly 950 so the difference in that presumably is the 517 now what can happen here is that as you or your competitors supply products to this planet, the stockpile held will increase and their need will decrease. So that's something you've got to keep an eye on. Uh, so unlike some games, like for example Transport Fever, where the economy is, although it's dynamic, is quite slow in the way demand and supply shifts, in this game it can move very quickly and as I found out I I was sending ships to Luna with stuff they didn't need so I was getting no money for it and that was uh, well a route to profit to rack and ruin uh, a road to profit not quite the opposite uh, okay so water um, oh yeah they, I could supply water for much longer here by the look of it so that's a much more profitable yeah that's much more profitable goods to supply uh, machinery Oh, again, yeah, they need loads of that, so I can keep shipping machinery till the cows come home. Now, what's this here? Medicine. Uh, they don't really need any uh, for that. And uh, I was looking at raw materials. So where was where was that? Um, so is that this? So this is what it supplies. Ah, right. So yeah, rare resources. So they have 519 and they don't need it. They're supplying that. So that's fine. Um, but it's not sure. Oh, because they're not going to give me money for taking stuff away, are they? What will happen is that on Earth, rare resources, I will earn 222. And they need loads. Oh, well, actually, just a few. Uh, yeah, that's not a huge amount, is it? But it's something. Uh, and what's that? That is raw material, just raw materials, not rare resources. So it's a, a, again a slightly greater need for that. Um, something else which can happen, I've not seen it here because Earth is, is very well supplied. I think if you take too much away from a planet, you can run out. So again, that's something to, to, to take care of. So all this looking at numbers, what we're going to do is set up a route between Earth and the Moon. So let's come out of here. Uh, there's our Routes button. And let's create a brand new route. And uh, we're going to go from, let's, uh, from Earth, there we go, uh, to the Moon. That's it. So we've got a route and we want to add a ship to this route. And we've got two types of ship early in the game. We've got the Doing wonder what that's a, a, a pastiche of, an homage to, a Doing 909, it's kind of a space shuttle kind of thing, and that has 20 cargo bays to carry all sorts of these goodies. So different types of bays carry different types of product. And as you can see, it goes reasonably slowly. Uh, maintenance is such. You've got usage here. Again, more advanced ships will have different efficiency ratings. Uh, and different costs, uh, so we could order one of those. 
or you've got the much cheaper rocket. Now this the the shuttle here, the Doing, costs thirty three grand. A rocket costs less than one grand, but the Doing will come back. So it's a, it, it takes stuff too. It doesn't crash on landing. It delivers its stuff, picks any new stuff up, and comes back and is reusable. The rocket is not reusable. It's got five bays, um, and it's just you just fire it up to whatever wherever you want it to go and it just delivers stuff so that can be handy but I think for this first route we're going to want a doing it's going to go to the on the earth lunar direct route and it's going to be manufactured at earth and once it's been built we will launch it immediately uh, so what do we want to send we want to send water uh, where's water so we need a liquid bay which one of those is there's a liquid bay that carries water and dilithium fuel. Now we can either increment that by one, or take it down by one, or we've got times five, so we'll take lots of water. And this will carry raw material. We could take some machinery up as well, so we'll take some machinery up. We're not going to worry about food, I think. Oh, that's I oh know that's rare resources. We do want rare resources, don't we? Yeah, let's slip that in there. So that's going to take food up and bring back rare resources on the way back. So we're going to bring back five five units of rare resources. Um, so our ship will only be sort of 25% full on the way back. But that's okay. That's okay, I think. Uh, so we'll order that ship. Okay, I think that's done, isn't it? So if we go to our ship management screen, uh, yeah, we've got one ship on order, and it's going to take 25 days to arrive. So if we hit the space bar and get speed going, that will count down. Now, I'm going to pause it for a second, because a couple of other things I want to set up first as well. Uh, now, we do have an office on Earth. I don't think we have an office. We don't have an office on the moon. Uh, so I think we could do with one. Again, to build our reputation. Now, an office, unfortunately, costs 40 grand. But I'm not sure, I don't think there is any maintenance cost on that, he said, hopefully. So we'll build one of those. Uh, where's it built it? There it is. Splendid, so we've got that. Uh, again, that's just a way of um, making sure our prices are good, that we get good returns on our price, on our deliveries and the other thing I want to set up first is back on earth is a research station there is a research tree uh, which we can look at here so you get new ships new buildings uh, and you can get sort of sort of efficiency uh, research as well uh, so you get all sorts of this is not doesn't look like a terribly long tree actually no, actually, no it is it is quite long <laughs> Yeah, I haven't really played that far into it. So we're going to need to earn some research points, which are actually shown here in the middle of the uh, top bar of the screen. But to do that, we need to go back to a planet and construct a research station. Ah, that thing just popped into existence. It's got a slight... You, yeah, I think it's got a slight gr yeah, oop, green colouring. So that is my research station. And that's going to start pumping out research day by day um, until we, well, until we try to stop, I suppose. <laughs> okay, uh, so we've got that going to the moon. I also want, can I send stuff to Mars? Uh, again, it's, it's a slight different movement uh, mouse keys that I'm used to for other games so forgive me for being bad at moving around the screen okay so what do we have here on Mars they want machinery but, but there's nothing there's thing about here there's nothing underneath the horizontal bar so there's nothing coming back from Mars they want machinery water colonists okay now if I send the machinery which is that one there that's that's nice and profitable isn't it 343 
and that yeah I could deliver that for, for years and years and years and that would be fine okay um, shall I also build a small office here yeah my money is going down now quite dramatically here on Mars okay yep uh, do we want a gate let's buy a gate anywhere anyway uh, again that's, that is quite cheap we're not going to use it yet because I'm not going to be landing ships on Mars what I'm going to do instead is create a new route uh, a new route, there it is, and it's going to be from Earth to Mars, and I am going to be buying a rocket, and I will just send up machines. Now, notice here, it's, <laughs> it's copied the sort of consist, if you will, of my previous route into this rocket but I don't need that so I just clear that out that little X at the bottom uh, so let's put five machines in there Earth to Mars and launch immediately so we'll do that okay now they won't take anywhere near as long to deploy as the shuttles do and the great thing about rockets is I can reorder these so I will enable that there so what that means is that after each rocket has been uh, has, sh has shipped its its goods has completed its route and let's let's get this back into view uh, so once each rocket has delivered its cargo a new one will be ordered to join that route now because these are only nine hundred dollars a piece that's uh, that's hardly a drain on my resources Well, there goes the shuttle. So can I just move that? My apologies for my appalling navigation skills on here. Now let's turn that round. There we go. And we get who's that? That's some other company. She she is also shipping stuff to the moon. There's my ship coming back. Let's just pause that for a second. So what's he carrying? He is carrying five rare resources, and that's it. So that's quite nice, uh, and we can centre our display on that ship. I can move this dialogue out of the way. So we can see him there, and we can follow him down to landing, actually. There he goes. Beautiful. A little bit of maintenance at the gate. Uh, in fact, if we uh, escape out of there, let's have a look on our, our ship roster. Uh, so that ship there is on that route. And here you can see he's deteriorating 0.19%. Um, and this is dealt with by the maintenance yard. Now these do, I think, disrepair. One of these is kind if it gets to a certain level it becomes impossible you can't repair the ship uh, and that's it the job that that ship is is useless to you okay so we've earned already nearly seven grand from our shuttle we can't see here how much we've earned from the rocket uh, unfortunately uh, is that no that's that's something else can can we focus on that rocket or oh, we can there he is flying off to Mars and the, again the neat thing here um, I need to escape that is the planets are moving in or in their orbits so obviously depending on the alignment of the planets the amount of time it takes to get uh, from get to complete a route is going to differ as time goes on because obviously at the moon the earth travels at one speed Mars travels at another speed and uh, the distance that rocket needs to travel will differ. I mean, if the Earth is over here and Mars is over there, that's going to be a much longer journey than it is here. Uh, okay, so we're getting messages at the bottom. So another company, let's just pause this for a second. So another company has built a small maintenance shed on Luna. That will improve their 
ship's reliability, presumably. Uh, in fact, two companies have done that. And I've been building small offices. For the moment, I'm going to. I'm quite happy, I think, with my large maintenance shed on Earth. That should be okay. Now, does the route actually tell me? I get the lifetime profit uh, of these, so get yeah, the lifetime profit of my Earth to Moon uh, route, eleven grand, and seven hundred and seventy profit for Earth to Mars. So that's quite good for a ship that costs nine hundred. That's quite a good return on investment, isn't it? I reckon that's quite handy. Okay, uh, so uh, what do I want to do now? Oh yes, what I want to do next here. Uh, the, 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 the UI might be one thing, but the, the, the navigation of this... I, maybe it's, it's space games generally. I don't tend to play space games as such. Maybe you, you're more familiar with them than I am, and you might be better at handling the navigation. <laughs> uh, right, so we've got two gates here. Now, I'm not sure if I can tell how many ships these other people are, sh are, are putting out to... Uh, to the moon. I can't afford a new ship anyway without getting a loan. I can get loans but they they cost a lot of money to in interest. So I'm going to stay with what I've got at the moment I think. Oh more water. Yeah yeah this is looking good. So the demand for water and machinery is going up. Rare resources and... Ah! So maybe I could what I will do, if I can get another ship going up there, because what does my ship at the moment carry? Uh, this ship here carries machinery, robotics. You can carry rare resources and food, but not ordinary raw materials. Okay, whereas at the moment Luna is supplying raw materials as well. So that might be handy. So if I had another ship which was taking up uh, a different combination of products, I could do that. Or I could ship them by rocket. That might be something to do, actually. Let's... Uh, no, let's, let's see. If I can make 30 grand... Uh, how can I speed this up? There we go. Speed that up a bit. Not quite sure what that black disc is meaning there. No, I don't know what that means at all. <laughs> right, I've got 30 grand. So, can I spend that on a new. Uh, I don't want to. I do want to go here, actually. On a new ship for the Earth to Luna route. So, you're going Earth to Luna. Uh, we'll clear that. Uh, again, we will take uh, water. We will take machines. And we will take... Yeah, so it should be 50% in both directions. Machines and water from Earth to the Moon, and then these raw materials from Moon to Earth. It's going to be... It should be equally profitable. Well... It depends on the price. It all depends on the price of stuff, doesn't it? Here, yeah. Let's see how that works. Did I? I didn't order that ship, did I? Did I order that ship? No, I. No, I didn't. The man's an idiot. <laughs> so let's order that ship. You do not have enough. Oh, I need thirty-three grand. Bother. Right. Do I need to look at loans to start with? Uh, where's the finance tab? Is that the finance tab? No. Nope. Here it is. Yep. And you can see, you can look at this. There is vast amount of information to be seen here in terms of where your profit's coming from, what your expenses are, um, your net worth as a company. And you can see this, get this view in different periods as well. So there's loads of information, but it's not easy to read. Um, certainly as a new player, this is kind of overkill um, and you, you can get easily get, I easily get lost in this amount of information. Okay, um, 
Okay, I can't take a new loan for some reason. How much do I want to borrow? Um, it's not letting me borrow anything, uh, is it? What's that loan? Is that the loan I've currently got? Yeah, I think that's the loan I've currently... I mean, look at that, a 39% interest rate. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is outrageous. Okay. Right. I think what we will do then, if I can't afford to buy a new shuttle. Can I buy rockets? So I will set up a new route. Do I need a new route? I think I probably do. Which goes from uh, where's Luna? There's Luna to Earth. Uh, I, I, uh, it's truth. This is the, I've done this before. I'm not paying enough attention. I've, I've fiddled with the route here, um, and I need to remove a stop. Move that one there. There. Okay. Yeah, because I wasn't paying attention. I had a Mars Earth Direct set up here, um, and I was adding route rather than clicking new route. I, again, it's easily. I I find this just too easy to get lost in so let's right this is it new route lunar to earth okay uh, and we'll call this we can change name we'll call it lunar earth lunar resources for earth okay that will do um, and we will add ship to this it will be the rocket we'll clear that it's going to be raw materials and we're going to start this from the lunar of course Ooh, can I build ships on lunar good question I don't know we're about to find out and reorder that on a regular basis how's that doing Okay, it's looking fine so far. It's loading. Excellent. And is it going to be in transit anytime soon? Oh, there it is. There it goes. There's my rocket. And it's carrying five of those materials. Results. And it's ordering a new one. Splendid. So how much money? Uh, the, oh yeah, yeah. I think we're doing quite nicely in profit terms here. I'm nearly 32 and a half grand. So yeah, and then it goes down again. Right, I think this is a useful place to stop at this point. And as you can see, there's a lot of complexity to this and I'm only just getting started. And it can be very easy to get the economics wrong uh, and build too many ships or transport the wrong goods or not spot when the demand and prices change which is what happened when I first went into the game I didn't spot the fact that demand and supply changed the prices changed and my ships were basically carrying nothing and I was losing money hand over fist and went bankrupt very quickly uh, so um, hopefully that doesn't happen so that's it, the first episode of Interstellar Transport Company. I'm sure that's what it's called. <laughs> if you'd like to see more, uh, a little thumbs up, a like on this would be very much appreciated, but even better, of course. Uh, drop a note into the comments box below um, what you reckon to the game, if you think it's something that I can continue playing for some amount of time, and if you'd be interested in that. Any recommendations on good strategy or how to play the game would be very welcome indeed. Um, or any criticisms of what I've done so far as bad practice. <laughs> that would be very much welcomed and appreciated. Um, so that's it from me, Ajax, Ajax Post. That's me uh, here in Instella Transport Company. Thank you for watching today, and I will see you again soon. But until then, bye-bye for now.